When did you start to like really believe that it could be more than just a hobby? Pretty much from day one, just because I'd gone through it all. Straight away you laugh. Yeah, I was like, dude, I'm going to do it. That's freestyle stunt rider Jamie Baker. He's a pretty chilled bloke and an animal on the bike. Bikes were Jamie's first love and he's been fully committed to tearing it up on two wheels from a young age. But it's been far from an easy ride. Stunt riding isn't big in Australia like it is overseas and even though he's one of the best in the business, his passion alone doesn't pay the bills. He has to burn the rubber at both ends hustling on the night shift and stunting during the day to keep his dream alive. Jamie sacrificed a lot going full throttle on his mission to raise the profile of stunt riding in Australia and earn himself enough of a name to get paid. He's proved that if you've got enough drive, no one can stop you doing what you were born to do. Jamie, how did your fascination with bikes get started? Uh, so, you know, coming up when I was younger, um, three years old you know like everything i'd known was motorbikes like from a very young age so my dad had got me involved with bikes uh you know three years old started riding uh from there kind of moved into dirt bikes like you know i was got a little bit older and i was able to reach the ground and then 16 came and i was able to to jump on a sports bike so you know like yeah the fascination with bikes has always been there because that's all i've really known from a from a young age so what kind of bike were you riding as a three-year-old? Uh, yeah, it was just a little like uh, electric, uh, little electric like mock-up one. And yeah. then, yeah, I actually got a, a, a mini dirt bike and yeah, jumped into that sort of stuff. So And could your parents sort of tell like, oh, we've got a daredevil on our hands? Um, yeah, I just wanted to go fast, man. Like that was the that was the biggest thing. So, you know, you could always hear like, you know, mum or dad screaming at me, slow down. Like, you know, so, but, you know, it's it's the nature of the beast. You, you just want to see how fast you can go on it. So Yeah. And so the feeling that you used to get as a little kid, has that carried on to now? 100%, Just, yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, you know, looking at the stuff that I used to get, the, the feeling I used to get when I was a kid, like the excitement about a bike or, you know, um, just, yeah, just being on the bike, you know what I mean? Like, definitely even now, like with the access to the, the machines I've got, there's not one day where I'm not excited to kind of go in and either throw spanners at them or jump on them and take them for a ride. So, yeah. Yeah. And so in your life, it's really been as you've gotten bigger, the bikes have gotten bigger yeah, and I'll, louder. Yeah, as they've gotten, and now we yeah. can see it. So you got the biggest one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, um, yeah. They've definitely got a lot bigger and a lot more expensive. So, yeah, yeah that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And when did you get onto the, the stunt bike? So as like I started to move up through like sports bike riding and all that sort of stuff, um, it was actually a friend of mine back in 2011. He had a, a stunt bike set up and he was like, dude, like you, you, you're good on your bike. Like you should try my stunt bike. I was like, stunt bike? Like, what did, I, I did know what they were like because I did have a few of the old old school, like early 2000s and like the late 90s, like stunt. But you hadn't been a fan. I was a fan, but I just never knew it because it wasn't accessible here in Australia. We didn't have that, um, you know, we didn't have that kind of, you know, that, that base. Like, you know, it was hard to... Nobody was selling a stunt bike. Nobody was doing that sort of stuff. So, you know, to access that kind of stuff, it wasn't available. So when my friend actually said to me, like, you know, hey, do you want to jump on mine? I've got one that's set up. I was like, all right, like, I'll give it a shot. So, yeah, the first ride, we go out on it, um, come come back on this thing. And back in the day, like, he used to run, like, a big 12 bar. So he'd come back, scrape it and all that sort of stuff. I, I hit this thing, like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I go back, I'm like, man, sorry, I just scratched your bike. He's like, dude, I've been trying to do that for ages, man. Are you serious? <laughs> so, yeah, it was really cool, you know, like. Um, and do you feel like you were sort of hooked from that moment? Yeah, yeah, from that. Because it was like, like people talk about like buying a bike is like the ultimate kind of freedom. Like, I guess like you yeah. can go and do like, you know, you can do things that, you know, you obviously can't do in a car. You can do things on them you can't do in a. Yeah, and just that exhilaration. Yeah, like it's your man and machine. That's what it is. You're, you know, you respect your bike. Your bike respects you, that sort of stuff. But. Stunt bike riding took my riding to the next level of uh, where it was like on the road, it was like a lot of stop here, indicate there, turn here, go this fast. With these, I can get on, I can do what I want. Nobody can tell me what to do on them. It's like the ultimate kind of freedom. Yeah, you can't, so that suits you as a person. Yeah, like 100%. Does like, that flow on into the rest of your life where no, you're that so kind much, of guy? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> like no, no one can tell you what to do? Uh, no, nah, like, you know, I'm, I'm respectful and, and, you know, I've got a good attitude towards. Yeah. But like when I get on the bike, it's like helmets on. All bets are off. Yeah, it's it's done, dude. Like I don't care. Like I come off, I hurt myself. We, yeah. we pick up, we rebuild, we keep going, you know. So it's a part of the stunt life, dude. So. And just on that, like how do you feel when you get on the bike? Because obviously, for you to commit as much as your life as you have, it can't just be, it's not just riding to you. And yeah. other people who don't get it would be like, you know, it's just riding a bike. I don't understand. But 
what does it mean to you damn that is a good question man it's i i don't know what i would do if it wasn't for riding like i don't know where i'd be if it wasn't for riding that's 100 percent. like so that there is not just like a um it seems to me like it was it's the ultimate sort of form of self-expression yeah and that's what it was like you know coming up through school and all that sort of stuff i, I was told like you, you're not going to be anything like pretty much give up like you're done dude like so all of a sudden like coming in and, and getting good on a bike and that was a weird thing because bikes were always there and people say like it's always the thing that's been around your life the most that will end up being the the deal breaker like that you'll stick with it and you'll run with it and you'll find that you're going to get what you're meant to do yeah so the bikes were always there but i never looked at them like i came up i went through state state soccer all that sort of stuff and it just wasn't for me like Mm. i was looking and i was like i don't want to do this like you know and then i got into a more individual sport i tried my hand at um kickboxing all that sort of stuff even that dude i was like it's just not like it's not there and then all of a sudden it was like the bikes were always there like yeah. how did i not figure this out from the beginning sounds you know? like you're talking about your true love right now yeah oh dude trust me it man. was always you. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> so um yeah looking at it like that it's I, I think it's it's in the heart dude so yeah that's the way i feel about but you, it you mentioned people telling you that you weren't going to be anything and yeah. sort of ch- throwing shit on you so did you feel like when you were on that that it was your special gift like you were a bit yeah it was a bit out of the ordinary whenever yeah, you jumped 100%, on 100 percent, because it was like me as a person like it was a little bit out of the ordinary like you know never really fit in with the kind of social groups never fit in with the kind of team sports and all that sort of stuff so i could kind of look at a bike and be like damn like even if it was smashed beyond repair i'd be like i can build something out of that you know and it was kind of like me like coming up when i was told like dude like no you're not you're not good enough for this you're not good enough for that you're, yeah at school like all that sort of stuff like all of a sudden it was like well hang on a minute this company is going to come in and say to me like hey dude we want you to represent us and we're going to do we're going to help you in return we're going to fund it all the, and i'm like you guys what like are you guys serious yeah, you like, never expected yeah. that no nah, and i didn't i really didn't dude and so now you know it's it's gone to the next level so yeah it's it's really cool and so how long did it take for people to start telling you that to start saying you know there's no money in stunt bike riding that's not a real thing like get a real job like what <laughs> you're wasting early, time it was pretty early on bro yeah. like so yeah when i did pick up my first bike a lot of people were like oh you know another another craze another you know it's gonna fail all this sort of stuff yeah. by you know when i did pick my first one up 2011 by 2013 i'd reached like pro status and then 2017 i'd signed a factory deal with kawasaki so you know that was like yeah that was pretty pretty surreal so yeah. when did you start to like really believe that it could be more than just a hobby pretty much from day one just because i'd gone through it straight all. away you're like yeah i was like dude it. i'm gonna do it like you know because i'm seeing things a lot different to what everybody else is like from the the like outlay of the bikes like you know every kind of stunt bike i'd seen going to shows and stuff they're always really ratty and they were just held together with zip ties and i was like man how are you guys getting paid from this? Yeah. Like, how are you guys making bank when your bike looks like you've just pulled it off a tip? Like, and I'm like, I'm going to change it. Like, I'm going to do something different. Like, and I built some showstoppers, dude. Like, I was winning awards for them, and I'm like, what? Like, this is this is yeah, crazy. And then you're like, getting that feedback that actually, yeah, like, actually, this goes. is a real so, thing. Yeah, yeah, that just amplified it to the next level of like, all right, well, if I can do this, then you know, and then like, I've got friends that you know. Uh, are backing me a family that are backing me 110 percent like dude that's it like it's done like you're not gonna you're not gonna break it down and like oh you can't do it watch me dude <laughs> you want to bet yeah we'll see so and what's it meant to you seeing how far you've come in that past decade and proving to yourself and others that there is actually a future in it um, and you know living your truth as well because if you were to give it away because people told you that you should you would have in the back of your mind like what am i doing i could have done yeah like that was i I never wanted to be the guy to get to like 80 years old and be like i wish i'd have done that i wish i'd i could have that time back and hit it again you know so now that's pretty much i'm just like well either works or it doesn't or i'm going to give it 110 percent in the end so and that's what i did and it it worked so you know i think going that kind of route with it and just not listening because it's it's a lot easier for people now to be negative than positive and you see that a lot on social media now like it's very easy for somebody to write a negative comment than to praise someone for doing something good so i think just having those kind of you know 
the, the blinders on to that sort of stuff. You just you you get thick skinned in this sport, man. Like not everybody's gonna support what you do. And it's the same in normal life. Not everybody's gonna support your career decision. Not everybody's gonna be backing you 110%, but for the core people that are behind you 110%, it's worth like, you know, one of those people is worth like 10 million of those other people. So, you know, you just gotta stick with it and follow your passion. And I guess if the self belief is strong enough, you don't necessarily need anyone else at all. I mean, you do like I mean, you do need people around you to support you because if all you are getting on a daily basis is like a negative feedback, like it, it does wear on you. But like I said, you've got to be thick skinned. But definitely having like people that support you, like, you know, I know off the bat right now, there's three people, four people I could call right now and say, hey, dude, my bike's like, I need it for an event tomorrow. I need to do a full rebuild. They'd be like, yeah, dude, I'm there. Like, don't worry. Like, I'm taking days off work. I'm coming to see you, you know? So. You've got to have a strong, strong core behind you. Yeah, and then I guess all those groups that have supported you as well and got behind you in terms of like your sponsors and and whoever wants to to back you. So yeah, got like yeah, a hundred percent. Like yeah, like so it's important to have like a strong uh, uh, core team, but also like the companies that behind you that you're representing is like, you know, they're they're really strong as well because they're the ones that are you know helping you go to that next level and that sort of stuff. So yeah, hundred percent. Like sponsors are. You know, they're everything in a, in a sport like this because if you go out and break a $20,000 bike, it's like, hey, man. Like, it's not cheap. Yeah. yeah it's like, you know, what are you going to do? And it, especially if you go out, have a bad week and break three of them, like, you're, you're in trouble. So <laughs> You're in debt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. And I guess a lot of those neg- negative comments and stuff, that's people who aren't doing stuff with their own life. They're not chasing after their own dreams. And so they're going to, it's easier for someone to tear you down than, than go and change and look at themselves in the mirror and make some changes. So yeah, 100%. As long as you understand that, you don't have to even. Like, I, I don't really want to hang dirt on anyone, but like, you know, it, it is, man. Like, it's it's self, self-belief self and, you know, self-motivation. Like, you know, everybody's got that fire inside that they need to kind of fuel. So, um, yeah, you just can't. I just don't see the point in being negative towards someone else that's trying to do something like what kick could you possibly get out of it like i just don't understand it and like you know it's i think that's that's the evil part of social media that's just what you know you've you've got to you can't really take it everything on board from it so but i suppose your aim is to lift people up and motivate people yeah, and, and yeah. show them that going after your your passion is is the way to go and that yeah. you just got to stick out stuff and be persistent yeah 100%. give people an understanding of what you've had to sacrifice or how you've had to structure your life in terms of you know, paying the bills, what have you had to do to be so able to make it happen? Originally, like when I first started riding, like, you know, working and all that sort of stuff, like trying to juggle like practice time and all that kind of crazy stuff. It was actually one time I'd got my first event, like my own event. And I was like, damn, like I'm going to go ride a show. And I'd actually been told if I go to the event, like you've got no job to come back to. It was a three day event. And I'm like, I'm out, dude. So actually on the the whole time the event was going on, I was on on the net like searching for a job because i knew when i came back i had no job like i was done so like my so boss, did you just say i quit to the boss i was like dude i'm i'm chasing this you know like i'm i'm out like you're gonna fire me because i'm gonna go do something like yeah so that and was, that was right it call. and it was hard dude like 100 percent. like i was there you're trying to be so positive with people kids are coming up like hey man can i sit on your bike like you know how can i get a poster can i get a sticker like all this sort of stuff and you're there like in the back of your head knowing that you've just lost your job to come to this event like and that's what people don't see yeah so yeah that was pretty crazy it's happened a couple of times now so you you get thick skinned with that i guess that's when you prove what passion really is because when people will say oh yeah i'm passionate about this or like i'm really into this like really how how oh, into man, are you dude, like, how, you're willing to pretty much sacrifice dude, everything like some of the stories man like you know not having going to events not having money for hotels so i'd sleep in between two of my bikes in the back of my van like and people were like hey man like you look hell tired like, yeah dude i just slept in my van all night you know so uh, the bike's um, not that comfy like. yeah dude like you know so that's the sort of stuff people don't see yeah. and you know like it's there like there's riders now that are at a professional level like at a top level that have you know like good backing but it's still like mm. you still have to do what you have to do because it's just not big enough here to- to have that money in it unless you're like you know get swing some some massive some deal. massive sponsor yeah, yeah or like you know something like that or you've got it it's really hard to book shows here in australia and the few especially that, right now yeah yeah well everything now is yeah. a little bit tougher so you know it's really put the brakes on a lot of people's careers um but yeah like that stuff still exists dude like you know just having enough money to put you know gas in your bike or you know you're gonna go like eat 
servo food just so you can go to training and all that sort of stuff like it was there dude i've come through that and like i'm not in a rush to go back to that i'll tell yeah. you that right now so yeah i guess though that means that when you actually got on the bike you knew in your mind that you were sacrificing everything to be able to keep getting on it so you were, you must have been riding it with just everything you had yeah 100 percent, dude. Yeah. like it was that was where like jumping on the bike oh, i felt like I'm not a big guy, dude. Like, you know, I'm not like, you know, so, you know what I mean? Like when I was on the bike though, I was like, you know, I'm kind of invincible. Like yeah. nobody can, I'm throwing around a 200 kilo bike. Like, and I've got a few friends. And that's how you feel when you put the helmet yeah, on. Yeah. Like as soon as the, the helmet's on, it's like, that's it, dude. Yeah. Like I'm a beast. everything's shut out <laughs> and it's just, yeah. And that's it. Like, yeah. you know, so it was funny. One of the guys, I was at a show one day and this guy goes to me like, oh, you know, your bike's a light as dude. Like, you know, that's how you throw them around and all this sort of stuff. I pushed like. Put it over onto the the stand because they're all crash caged up and you know lay it on its side and i'll go go on dude like pick it up and he's like, like 200 kilo bike man what are you gonna do like, they're, not, <laughs> they're not light bro yeah. so you know but it's a different kind of strength that you have when you ride these like not only mentally but also physically as well so and what about now with your work because you still you gotta do night yeah, shift so you have. yeah it's still like working like my nights start at like 12 o'clock at night finish at you know nine o'clock in the morning and then it's either stay up right through and throw throw spanners at bikes and get everything ready for the weekend to start shooting and riding and all that sort of stuff so it definitely takes a toll on you but yeah just, yeah but it's often sleep that you're sacrificing so that you yeah, can do a lot, more on a the lot bike of sleep dude yeah, a lot of sleep so but you know sleep when you're dead so it's all good and in terms of like when you're doing those night shifts and you're putting in those hours that you'd rather not be doing like what what gets you through that mentally what, what goes through your mind just to know like there's a way out there's you know there's always a way out of like a not so much a bad situation i think now like it, it's very lucky given the, the current situation globally that it's lucky to have a job and it's lucky to be able to still chase a passion i'm i'm kind of living but just to know that i'm not i don't have to do that for the rest of my life i think that's the ultimate thing the, the worst and the best advice my dad ever gave me when i started my apprenticeship as a mechanic i remember coming in my first day of work dude i'd left high school came in and he's like oh you know like how did how did you enjoy work and i was like yeah it was really good i had a lot of fun he's like oh that's what get ready you got the next 40 years of that and from that day dude i was like damn like i'm gonna find something where i can i'm my own boss nobody can tell me that you know you you're fired this sort of stuff it's gonna be like my own terms like i'm gonna go out and and do it so yeah, yeah and that doesn't just happen for most no, people 100 like it doesn't know, and a lot happen. of people will give up on that because it's too uncomfortable it's too uncertain there's too many voices in their ear saying you Don't know you should it. give that up and do something that makes more sense or is more traditional yeah but if you really earn that and you stick to that path and you keep pushing then you get there and that's when people look up to you and admire you and want to emulate you but the reason that they want that to do that is because it doesn't happen overnight you have to really um you know prove that you you deserve it to get to that point yeah like you have to kick working like you know you always you always have to put that that work in above and beyond and like um yeah like it, it's just about your personality as a, as a person like representing companies and and doing all that sort of stuff is you know it's paramount in you know learning that other side of the the writing as well that comes into it do you know what i mean so. And when you started in 2011, you said that, you know, you didn't really know what stunt bike riding was, like you heard of it, but there wasn't really a scene here in Australia. Where's it up to now? And what do you see as your goal in terms of raising that profile? Um, it's definitely got a lot better uh, from, you know, what it was back in the day, like when I came into it. Still, like my main concentration now is overseas events. So like I was the first rider to tour the USA, first rider to compete in the Dubai, first rider to compete in the Czech Republic. Um, and I learned very quickly, like when I was in America, like that the, the show front and all that sort of stuff is like, it's massive compared mm. to what is here. Yeah. Um, I, like we still do have big events, but it's not, it's not that regular. Yeah. Like, and it's there. not directed so much at the stunt riding. Whereas like in Europe, Dubai and all that sort of stuff, it's like hundred percent like stunt bike riding. That's where it's at, you know? So yeah, the scene is growing here, but it's got to become like more professional like people have to stay off the street like this stuff you know it's, it is it's dangerous what we do you know like you've got to be respectful of other people like if you're going to go and try and find a, a spot or you know try and learn the, the stuff you've got to be mindful of what you're actually doing like um you know if a bike gets out of control like doesn't matter how good you are like you 
you might not be able to save it. You know what I mean? So you've got to be very mindful about that. And I think that's where the professionalism comes. I don't ride on the road anymore. Like I've still got road bikes, but I'm, I'm I haven't rode on the road in probably three or four years. So you know, it might be the occasional one if I'm away, like overseas, that somebody hands me a bike, I'll jump on and go for a squirt. But yeah, I kind of gave that away when it, you know, it started to go really professional because then there's no, you know, there's no ego when you're riding with a group and you're like, oh, go on, man, do a wheelie, like all that sort of stuff. That's all out the window. So yeah. And you make it look easy on the bike, but yeah, sometimes, man, <laughs> we know it's not. Yeah, yeah. Just sort of how how uh, much do you need to be in control of that thing, or it, to ensure that things don't go wrong? Because obviously, it's a pretty powerful yeah, machine. Yeah, they, they're, they're really powerful now, especially with the newer model bikes. Like I said before, it's just respect your bike. Your bike will respect you. Don't push it beyond the limit of what you can't. Like especially at a show, like you never try and break out a new trick at a show if you're not 110% that you're landing it because if that bike runs off, like, doesn't matter how fit you are, dude, you're not catching that thing. So, yeah, you've got to be very mindful of that sort of stuff. But Like how little room for error is there with that? It's very little. Like, it's very little. And, like, the, you know, if you're on the internet and you, you've seen some of them where they have gone wrong, like, it's just like, dude, like, you know, you could have saved that. And as a rider, I look at it, I'm like, you could have saved that, but... You know, but you could have said that, maybe. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but it's easy to it's easy to speculate when you're on the. Have you had a few? Side. Yeah, I've had some good ones, man. Yeah, trust me, I've got a few more. Scars, you still got man. all your teeth there. Though, yeah, so. yeah, there's veneers. No, I'm joking. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's why I wear full face helmets, bro. Like, so, yeah, yeah, I never never mess with the open face ones, man. Because yeah, if you come down hard and eat a set of handlebars, you're in trouble. So, what's the the beauty for you of fighting for this when it is so hard and it is such a long road, so to speak? And it hasn't all just been given to you. Like, what do you envision it all coming together as, or meaning to you? Once um, you do get, you know, that that big sponsor, or you do get the overseas tours, and it's all sort of it's full time. It's now like it's like a ticket out, like a hundred percent. Like it's like a away from the. It's it's just doing something that I want, but I can also include my friends and my family that are close to me with it. That I think that's like the ultimate goal with it. Like, you know, um, it's cool to travel, like, but I've done a lot of traveling on my own now and, you know, going to events and sort of this stuff. Like now being able to kind of include like family and, and friends to come with me and, you know, experience what I experience and see that sort of stuff. That's really cool. And that's the aspect I like of it. Like just, you know, when finally do retire and can sit back and, man, remember when we did that? Like, you know, that sort of stuff. So it's just making memories, man. I guess it's going to mean that much more to you, though, when you can recount how you used to sleep between two bikes or, yeah. you know, you had to yeah. go through all these yards to get there. That's what makes a good story. Yeah. But it kind of can suck at the time. <laughs> so yeah, trust me, dude. It it's good suck. when you look back. But, yeah, it did suck. But, um, yeah. yeah, like, it, it's definitely cool. You're like, sleeping in a bed these days? Or? Yeah, every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on the floor sometimes. But, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, like, when you put it like that. But when you're on the bike, you don't think of – you don't think of those bad, or not so much bad times. You don't think about those experiences. Do you, you know? think about anything? Does everything just sort of just go quiet when you put the mask down? No, not so much. Oh, it goes much. very <laughs> loud. <laughs> it goes, yeah, really loud. Yeah, you're just thinking, break, 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 break. But yeah, no, nah, it's it's weird, man. Like it's not like, uh, yeah, that's actually a good question. Like thinking about what you think about. Like it's just technique. Like that's what I think about a lot now. Like jumping into tricks. Like all right, I know I need to. You know, lift my leg this high to be able to clear the bar because if I hit the handbrake or the clutch or like I'm eating it, you know. So, so there's no room to think about anything else. No, nah, like you're not thinking about like what you're going to do that night or what you're going to have for dinner. Like 100% uh, you're in that you moment. You yourself get in the zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As much as like. That's like art, man, really. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like if, you know, for me as a rider, like I look at it and it's just getting on a bike now. Do you know what I mean? Like where you kind of ask to talk about it. It's like, well, is that, isn't that like. The, just the norm when anybody jumps on a bike but yeah it's yeah you're definitely not thinking about anything else but the bike and what you're going to do you're looking at everything like oh look at that little stone on the road or uh, on the on your training spot like all that sort of stuff um do you think that's a big part of what you love about it that it just requires 100 percent of your focus yeah yeah 100 percent. because like when you're coming into a trick and you feel like sometimes you might feel the bike give a little bit and you're like well if this comes out like if this goes wrong like what's which way is it going like how am i going to get out of this how am i going to catch the bike what am i going to do like that sort of stuff like it's definitely 
a lot of your focus is about your surrounding stuff as well because you're you're taking everything on yeah the stakes are pretty high yeah because like you said if you make a, a slip you potentially end up not able to ride for like Quite months a at a time, time or- and i mean if you go if you have a real bad one you you might be you might not be riding again you know so i guess that's part of the game though and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as fun if that wasn't the case yeah, like it's definitely fun, like a hundred percent. But like I said, you're not you're not feeling the bad times when you're you're not thinking about that when you're on the bike. So yeah, yeah. you just gotta yeah, gotta keep running the, with it. The juice is worth the squeeze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what kind of say. legacy do you want to leave? Like, how do you want the scene to look when you're finished riding here in just Australia? Just that I came in, I did everything that um, people told me that I couldn't do. I did it, um, and just to say that I actually made it like i made my own way i did it in a professional way i didn't step on anyone i held my own name like you know all that sort of stuff so yeah i think that's the the kind of legacy i'd want to leave yeah i think from hearing from you the big thing is that you just didn't stop yeah it's just grind every every day you know like just don't care just keep going like more motorbikes you know just more events more travels it's just making memories what would you want the kids that are coming up to take on from you just listen to the guys that have been in the sport for a long time. Like if somebody's going to give you advice, especially now being a factory rider, if you know, I get a lot of people hit me up on social media asking like, Oh, you know, this way, that way, like, dude, I'll tell you like straight down, this is how it is. Whether they take your advice or not, it's up to them. But like the guys that have been in the game, they've seen it, listen to them because they know what's up. Um, I'll help anyone, man. Like, you know, Facebook, Instagram, they hit me up. You know, I'll talk to them about bikes all day long. And same at events. Like, you can't get me away from the stalls when, the like, the people are coming like, man, follow me on Instagram. Why is that? Why are you Because I, I like, like, the kind of social, you know, like, how this dude follows me on Instagram. Like, he's following, like, my journey. He's going to take the time out of his day to drive, like, an hour out to see me at an event. The least I can do is, like, spend some, kick it with him, spend some time, talk to him about his bike. Like, you know, that kind yeah, of and that, and even spending that hour that might turn him or, or her into the next one. That And that's it, dude. Like, you know, it's all about time. But also, like, I saw some stuff when I was coming up, like, with kids, like, wanting to sit on bikes, like, of riders that, you know, I'd kind of not looked up to, but, like, kind of seen that they, they were in the scene. They knew what was up. Like, I'd got a few shows. Like, I was like, dude, you know. And I actually got an invite to ride with them. And I went out to one of their shows and I'll never forget it, dude. This little kid comes up, oh man, can I jump on your bike? Like, no. I was like, what? Like, yeah. oh, you can't sit on my bike. I was like, dude, this kid's like six years old. Like, you know, he potentially could sit on that bike and that will be the brand of bikes he will love for the rest of his life because you gave him the five minutes to jump on it. And I remember going home that day and everything that I'd had from like that event riding with those guys, I threw in the trash, dude. I was out. I never rode with them ever again. Mm. I was done. And like, I think having that kind of interaction with the crowd and saying like, yeah, dude, like jump, jump all over it. Like you get parents now at events, like don't scratch it. It's like, dude, you can't <laughs> do any worse to it than what I do. So you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? But um, yeah, just really giving giving the next generation the option that I never really had or the the positive feedback that I never really had when I first entered into the sport to say like, hey, dude, you can do whatever you want. Like, you want to be a stunt bike rider? Go for it, man. Like, just yeah. do it the right way. Do it the right way. Yeah. I think you're doing it the right way by being a role model in that respect as well. Oh, how, is, how is the bike and, and riding through your life, how has that affected the man you are today or made you into who um, you are in terms of what it's taught you? Uh, it's definitely made me... It's definitely made me realize like how fortunate I am for the experiences that I've gained through riding. Um, like, you know, I honestly don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for riding. So I'm, I'm very, very thankful, very grateful, you know, all that sort of stuff. Values, it's definitely cemented friends and family. Like, you know, like a hundred percent, like it's made me realize like even like, you know, when there's been really bad times, you know, they're always like, hey, dude, like, we're still, we're still behind you, you know, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's definitely cemented, like, my core, core, like, friendships and my core of the family. So, yeah. And what would you have missed out on, do you think, if you had listened to those people who said, 
give this up, you know, you're a loser, this stunt bike riding isn't a real thing. What would you have missed out on? I never would have been overseas. Like my first trip to America, 2016, I'd, I'd never been outside of Australia. And then all of a sudden I'm like getting an invitation to go and ride shows for three months in America. First trip ever on it. I was like, dude, like, really? Like, and then I'm over there and like the people, that was the most surreal thing, like getting over there and people actually knew who I was. I was like, how do you know who I am, dude? Oh man, I follow you on Instagram. And like, you know, the same thing, like I was going through Poland, dude. I'm in the airport in Poland. This dude comes running <laughs> I love running you in up, Poland. <laughs> comes running, JV, JV. I'm like, yeah. He's like, man, I follow you on Instagram, dude. What's up? And I'm like, damn, dude, like this yeah. stuff is legit. Like people actually support. But then you come back to you, to home and like you're in, you've grown up here in like, you know, Adelaide and there's people that you, you've seen that, you know, they know what you're doing and they don't even, you know, it's like, and that comes back to it. Like, not everybody's going to support what you do. And they might look at that like, well, I could do that, but, you know, he's doing or, you know, rah, rah, whatever. But then you go away and you've got, like, a support, like, crowds that are just, like, you know, cheering you. And it's like, man, they, this is, like, crazy. Like, I mm. never expected this. But it's a bit trickier because is, there's that disconnect where a lot of the, the love and the fanfare is, is overseas rather yeah. than back home. Rather than back home. Like, yeah. You know, so you've got so, this whole sort of family that loves and supports you, but you only really see them on social like media. I, no, don't get me wrong. Like, I do have a lot of supporters here in, in Australia, like, and 100% I'm grateful for them. But, like, it's... I've had guys, like, that have called me out on social media and then seen me at events and, like tried to like oh hey man like i was only mucking around and it's like nah dude like you blasted me on so like it's what's up like i'm here now let's ride head to head oh no nah, no nah, i can't man my bike's broken seriously like you know so that sort of stuff there like yeah i'm not saying like i don't have supporters here in australia like i really do and i'm 100 percent grateful for them but it was just a little bit different the way i experienced it overseas like it was it was crazy dude like so yeah, I'm sure you get back there eventually. I hope so, man. Sometime. Oh, well, this is going to be the first year in three years that I miss out on uh, Czech Stunt Day. So um, I'm really shattered. That's happening uh, this this month. So usually I'm on a plane about now heading to the Czech Republic. I would have been back in Poland, back in Czech. But is, it is what it is. That's it, man. Just got to focus. Sit home and be sad. Nah, so <laughs> now watch like, online. Yeah, yeah, like support the riders that are there that are doing the hard yards, like 100%. Um, but also just get the mindset right for 2021 because these months go quick, man. Mm. And, you know, before you know it, it's like, oh, I'll have, I'll have a month off or I'll have two months off from training. Next thing you know, it's like August next year, you're on yeah. a plane again and it's like, you know. And you want to stay on it and stay relevant yeah, and you're right on the cusp of something yeah. really big. You don't want to let that slip. Yeah. And it's frustrating having this gap here where, you know, everyone in the world has to wait it out. Man. But you got to make sure that you're ready to go when, when it's time. Yeah, like I think, given the current situations like globally it's definitely put a lot of things on hold like event wise sponsor wise like everything but it's learning to adapt at the times that we're in now um the online support from everybody has been absolutely insane like you know just more than what it usually is and you know i think it's just adapting to what we're at now but still not maintaining because i hate that word but like still pushing to go to that next level of like you know progression so i guess the beauty is you can ride that thing no matter what's happening that's the other thing too like i've been very fortunate that i can still actually train whereas a lot of other guys like even overseas have been very limited with their times because of you know what's going on um so yeah that i've been very fortunate with that i can still maintain like a level of training with it who do you imagine you'd be if you were the jamie that gave up on this you know 10 years ago Man, I don't even want to think about that person, dude. I honestly don't, I couldn't tell you, dude. I really don't know. Like, I honestly do not know where I'd be if it wasn't for riding. Probably be, yeah. So I'd, Thinking about riding. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd still have a bike, but it wouldn't have been, like, where it is today. So, yeah, I honestly don't know where I'd be. Would have you, you got, like, a, a last message you'd like to give to your, your fans or something like that? Um, Yeah, like, you know, thank you thank everyone for supporting me like you know following me over the years the support has been absolutely crazy a uh, massive thank you to my sponsors a huge thank you to all my friends a massive thank you to my family like 100 um but yeah just stick with it 
don't listen to negative people. Just keep pushing. Like, even if somebody comes in and, oh, you know, man, I'm living proof, dude. Like, you know, I did it. I did it when everybody told me I couldn't. So just stick with it. If you've got a passion, stay with it. And where are you going to go from here? Hopefully back to check. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so now we're working on like the YouTube online series with the the breakdowns of the bikes and rebuilding like current bikes that I already have and introducing new bikes that we're bringing into the fleet. Um, but yeah, just really concentrating on training and, and kind of the, the, the social media aspect of stuff now. There's always more to do. There is, dude. There's, these things never stop. Man. Thanks for tuning in to the Bolton Brothers podcast as we do our part to change the face of men's mental health. Never underestimate how your story can change someone else's life. We can all make a difference. So who's next?